Aki Kaurismaki is the only author who has a worldwide influence from Finland. Kaurismaki literally means mountain of deer. Aki's grandfather took this surname according to Russian culture. No one had this surname in Finland except for Aki's own family and his wife. Most of his films are based on working class living in the society, embodying the subsistence and frustrated lives of marginal people in urban areas. Meanwhile, Aki's works contain strong formalism and minimalism cinema, and he's proficient in coping with images, pursuing the pathos of man's alienation, bleakness, and nostalgia, which maximizes his personal impact on his films. That's why we call him an auteur. Aki has his own standpoint as a common person against the grim society, focusing on testing individuals' isolation and frustration, and eventually make the characters rejuvenated by love and living in tranquility. His cinematic language is considerably distinctive, containing profound sympathy towards working class. Furthermore, his humanistic care and virtuoso cinema skill make him an auteur. Who puts most emphasis on cinematic aesthetics after Ingmar Bergman in Scandinavia? By the way, after finishing Fanny and Alexander, Ingmar Bergman had sold his old air flux to Aki Kaurismaki, and 17 of Aki's works are shot by this old camera. The reality, which is represented in Aki's films, especially the melancholic and gloomy life condition of working class. As well as repression of the society and disillusionment of dreams, makes these characters like those counterparts in *Life Is Elsewhere* by Milan Kundera, as a Scandinavian author, compared with Bergman's religious philosophy theme and domestic psychological dramas, Aki's films take a root on proletarian world, illustrating the struggle between the persistence of pursuing personal dignity. And the vicious circle of failure on personal fulfillment. His films, however, are never didactic. Instead, they make a joke out of the extremity of the economic situations they depict, mining the cruelty of the unemployment officer or the bank bureaucrat for black comedy. That explains Aki's attitude towards capitalism society. I think capitalism in general is a crime. His films epitomize the national character of Finns, who are taciturn and self-sustained. Their joy and sorrow, endeavor and deprivation, love and redemption are similar to Zolaism. Kaurismaki's distinctive style can be easily recognized in almost any of his works. Most probably because of his own artistic confidence inherited from his cinematic mentors, Douglas Sirk, Rainer Werner Fassbinder, and his compatriot Theobo Tulio, taught him plausible contemporary approaches to melodrama, while Yasujiro Uzu and Robert Brezon showed how to achieve maximum impact with minimal approaches. Indeed, Kaurismaki once claimed that he made the Match Factory Girl. Because I want to make him seem like a director of epic action pictures. His means to performance isn't quite the same as that of Brazon's famously fat models, but within the same aesthetic range. He's also a fan of Jean-Pierre Merville, who is considered a cinematic poet. Likewise, he also focuses on the life of the marginal. Overt and oblique references to classical Hollywood and the French cinema. Also abound with Hamlet Girl's business owing much to film noir, while Louvre is a conscious tribute to the popular front films of the 1930s. Of his contemporaries, Jim Jarmusch is both a friend and a cultural fellow traveler. He showed up in Leningrad Cowboys Go America, while Jarmusch returned the favor by casting familiar charismatic actors in the Helsinki set final segment of Night on Earth. Compared with Lars von Trier's Dogma '95 and Last Challenge of Mora Bezlam, like in Dovila, Breaking the Waves, Idiotana, although they all focus on revealing the deficiency of society, the carelessness of Bura, 
the absurdness of values. Aki's films are more focusing on the essence of life, shrouded by exquisite stories, emphasizing on characters and touching the audience in a subtle and imperceptible way. Throughout Aki's films, there is simple and plain photography with extremely succinct dialogue and emotions. The dialogue is famously laconic. The articulation is unadorned, direct, and in strict standard language, without showing much emotion or drama. Characters frequently stand still and recite the dialogue as if it consisted of eternal truth or nothing at all. These characters rarely smile. Not sadly, and smoke constantly. The camera is usually still. Events are shown in a plain manner, and the characters are usually left alone, facing the consequences. In most cases, the atmosphere, subtexts, and the psychological activities are revealed simply by a gesture or an expression in one's eyes, and the contrast between stillness and movement, simplified but not simple. Aki has declared that his methodology to acting is similar to Bertolt Brecht's theory that acting should be avoided in films, and the actor should regard himself as a narrator who only quotes the character he is playing. Therefore, the audience would think by sense rather than sensibility. In Aki's later films, like Light in the Dusk, Le Havre. He tends to give us a warm and happy ending, make the marginal people have others to care for them, even though the resignation in their life is irretrievable. While lodging in the grim and cold urban city, his films are rarely involved in religious theme. Occasionally, there shows up the Salvation Army in *The Man Without a Past*, or he juxtaposes the portraits of Jesus and Urho uh, Kekkonen. Who is the president of Finland from 1956 until 1982? Ironically, in Ariel. Since this film, Aki established the iconography that he would revisit again and again in his later works: a mixture of sadness and nostalgia, featuring jukeboxes, Cadillacs, dive bars, street dogs, and ribbons. Aki's repertory company is comparatively small, and the same staff make frequent reappearances throughout his works, as well as his cinematographer Timo Salminen. Familiar faces include Sakari Kosmanen, Nine Features, Three Shorts, Etko Nikkari, Matto Valtonen, Edina Salo, Sake Yervampa, Kari Vanen, Andre Wiedemann, and. Marco Beldola, and there are also occasional cameos from more internationally renowned names. These include Jim Jarmusch, Lenny Gwar Cowboys Go America, Sam Fuller, La Vie de Bohem, Jean-Pierre Liu, Bohem, and Louavre, and Carlos Marquez's long-term mentor and collaborator, the Finnish critic Peter Von Bag. But Kaurismaki's two favorite actors are unquestionably Katti Altinen and Matti Peronpa, who between them played more leading roles in Aki's film than anyone else. Across ten features, usually as the female lead, and one short, the blondie Valerie Altinen has left an indelible mark on Kaurismaki's work. She was most memorable in the victim-turned-avenger title role of the Masked Factory Girl, but she was also the former head waitress in Drifting Clouds, thrown on the scrap heap at 38. Aloitin tiskarina, sitten keittiöapulaisena ja tarjoilijana ennen kuin pääsin hovimestariksi. Voisin vieläkin tarjoilla, mitä tahansa. Ymmärrän, mutta en voi auttaa. Minulla on jo täysi henkilökunta ja ollakseni rehellinen tarjoilijaksi alat olla jo vanhaa. Olen 38. Siinäpä se. Saatat kupsahtaa milloin tahansa. Itse olet yli 50. Se on eri asia. Minulla on suhteita. 
ja poltatkin vielä. Onko sinulle henkivakuutus? Väännetäänkö kättä? Ei. Mene kortistoon ja odota. Voin kysellä sieltä täältä, mutta tuskin se auttaa. The farmer's wife in Juha, controlled by temptation, the salvage army activist in The Man Without a Past, and Ahleti in Luavak, whose very name is reminiscent of the era of French cinema, even with her strong Finnish accent. When she pops up in a quite brief cameo in The Other Side of Hope, it's like encountering an old friend. Mati Pelomba, possessor of the downbeat mustache in Kaolis Maki's entire rogues gallery, appeared in 10 features, two shorts, and quite a few other joint projects. For instance, appearing alongside Aki in several Mika Kaolis Maki's films, such as The Liar, The Worthless, as well as The Vocalist in Zombie and The Ghost Train. He was a tyrannical manager in the Leningrad Cowboys films, the lonely garbage man Nikwander in Shadows in Paradise, the veteran prisoner Mikkonen in Ariel, and the painfully shy Reno in Take Care of Your Scarf Tashiana, and much else besides. Pelompa would undoubtedly have surpassed this impressive tally if he hadn't died in 1995 at the age of 44. According to Aki's interview, Marty had water on his lungs and he was coughing all the time. But he refused to see a doctor. Finally, it got so bad that his friends carried him handcuffed to a doctor. But it was too late, because by then his heart had been working too hard. And he died because of a heart attack. His old friend promptly paid a moving tribute to him via a steel photograph glimpsed in drifting clouds a film in which he was meant to play a significant role, and The Man Without a Past. But even Otinen and Pelompa are often upstaged by their Canaan fellow co-stars, one of whom, Takti, won the Palm Dog Award at Cannes for her performance in The Man Without a Past. She plays Hannibal, the guard dog, whose demeanor is the polar opposite of that suggested by her serial killer name. An entire dynasty has left its mark on Kaolis Maki's films. Takti's mother, Bidu, was in Yuha, and her grandmother, Laika, was in La Vie de Bougem, as a dog named Baudelaire. While Bayou from Lights in the Dusk is Takti's daughter, another Laika appeared in Lohav while her successor Valpo in The Other Side of Hope plays a dog named Koistinen, the human protagonist of The Lights in the Dusk. Another great performance was given by Birdali in Drifting Clouds, whose solemn demeanor beguilingly echoes that of his newly unemployed owner, while the dog who accompanies the opening credits of Hamlet Ghost Business immediately caught my attention because of his cute barking and cuddly appearance.